Hey guys, what is up? This is First Two Weeks, and this is my complete guide to extinction. Basically, absolutely everything you're going to need to know about extinction to get a really good score on it. Except for relics 2 through 5, I will be going over one relic in this, but relics 2 through 5, I, I've done two recently, but I'm not past second prestige, so I don't have any more relics than just two. And I will be posting that very shortly as well. But for right now, I figured this would be a very good gameplay to show you guys, because all the challenges were completed during this gameplay, and it was my first time actually doing this with one relic. But the first thing you're going to need to know to get a good score is what loadout to use. If you're going solo, like I'm going to show you the guys, this guy that's basically for solo only. And you can basically apply it to co-op if you want. But for solo, the only class that's worth using is the weapon specialist class. If you're using the moral relic, then you're not going to really use any class. But yeah, if you're using a class, definitely use weapon specialist. You saw me just flip through the pistols really quickly there. The um, fully, the highest pistol you can equip currently, that's going to be the one you're going to want to use. The fully auto one when you get to higher ranks. As far as these ammos here, basically you're going to be wanting to use the armor piercing at all times, except for when you're using the pistols only relic, and then you're going to be wanting to use explosive ammo to get better accuracy. And for the next slot, it's going to be definitely armor. Armor or anything else because it just saves your life more than you can imagine. If you're at really low health, you can just pull an armor pack and you got a bunch of more health so you don't go down. It just is a huge save for this. The Vulture, don't use that. I have that equipped currently. I might switch in a second, I'm not sure. But the Sentry Gun is definitely the best thing to use in this, without a doubt. The IMS is pretty good as well. I wouldn't really use much else. The Mortar Strike, maybe, I guess. But I would probably still use the IMS until you unlock the Sentry Gun and then just Sentry Gun from then on. And then for the fifth one, I'm going to recommend to use the Riot Shield. I don't think I used it in this one actually, I think I just used a Death Machine. But yeah, because I was experimenting with a bunch of different stuff to try to figure out what was the best setup. The best setup right there is going to be the Riot Shield. I don't use it in this, but it gives you a little bit of protection from behind, just kind of like a zombie Riot Shield. And so yeah, it's just really helpful. Alright, and now on to the next section, which are the challenges. These are very important because they give you an extra skill point to enhance your loadout, as well as a challenge bonus at the end of the hive. You're going to see a challenge bonus pop up. On the lower hives, it's not going to be worth very much, but on the higher hives, it is worth a pretty substantial amount of points. The first hive right there is only going to be melee only, or it's going to be take no damage from the aliens. Both are pretty easy and straightforward. The rest of these, if you're using the pistols only relic, I don't think I am here. No, actually, no, I'm not for a fact here. I'm using smaller cash here. If you're using the pistols only relic, that is the only challenge that will pop up. You're only going to get the get kills with pistols only or whatever. Otherwise, you're going to have to look around for a shotgun or an assault rifle or a sniper rifle or something along those lines. This is one of the more challenging challenges right here that you're seeing me. This is my third challenge. This is kill three aliens while they're in the air. I'm not really sure how that guy was in the air because that counted as a kill there. But what you got to do for this one, because it's pretty tricky because, well, 90% of the time they're on the ground. But you can kind of see where they're spawning in from, like up on that hill, that's where I'm looking mainly right now. I'm looking up on that hill to see, because when they jump down from that hill, they're in the air for a decent amount of time. So basically you just have to look depending on where you're at, at what, hi at what hive. You're going to have to look and see which hive is, or which spot's going to be the best they're going to be able to hit them out of the air while they're coming in at you. With these scouts, they die pretty quickly, especially with this pistol. If you have a worse pistol, it might be a little more difficult, of course, but then you can just grab a gun as well, because this is actually not that early of a hive. You see, I plan money to grab a gun there, but I just don't because I don't really need it at this point. And just another side note as I'm finishing with this challenge here, I'm sure most of you guys are already know that these challenges aren't hive specific, you're going to hit the same challenges for every hive every time. And as on top of that, actually, you're not even going to get the same challenges every game. There's no guarantee just because you haven't gotten a challenge yet, you're going to get it later. It's probably pretty likely, but it's not guaranteed, and you'll even get sometimes the same challenge twice in one game. I've already had that happen. And now we're on to the next one, which is kill 15 aliens while using shotguns. So I'm just going to run over here, grab a shotgun, pretty much like the pistol one, like I was just explaining how this works. I mean, yeah, that pretty much doesn't need any more explaining. The next hive is the barrier hive with a helicopter. There is no challenge for this one, just protect the helicopter from scorpions. And I would throw a sentry gun up right in the upper right-hand corner up there where I was looking at. I'll go over that a little bit more in detail later, but right now I'm kind of just doing challenges, so we'll come back to that in a minute. And a little bit of a sign away from the challenges again. The best gun in the game, in my opinion at least, is up here on top of this ladder thing. As long as you're not using pistols only, of course, because then you won't be able to use it. But it is a light machine gun worth 3,000. It's probably the best gun there is. The next challenge is kill 15 aliens all prone. Pretty self-explanatory once again. There is no real... Basically my strategy for this is just 
I drop shot a lot of the aliens. I, I don't sit prone in the corner, I'll just usually just drop shot them. I have a scout controller, so it makes it really easy. But yeah, that is basically my entire strategy for that. Now on to one of my favorite challenges, because you basically just cannot screw it up unless you try to. It's killing scorpion melee damage. Even, even if you're in a co-op game, it's still really easy to do, and there's no way your teammates can screw it up for you. Basically, you just find a scorpion. You can shoot it a little bit beforehand, and then as soon as you shoot it a little bit, just knife it to finish it off. All it needs is just a knife to finish it off, and that's... Yeah, that's pretty much it. It just makes it pretty easy. You can see the scorpion coming down the wall right there. I just shoot a little bit. And... Coming for the knife. And that's it. <laughs> yeah, you can knife it a few times. It doesn't even matter. The next challenge I'm going to show you guys is... Spend 6,000 before the highway is destroyed. That is a very difficult challenge to do on this early of a round. I still did it, but it's very hard to do on this early of a hive with the uh, uh, smaller cash or smaller wallet or whatever it's called. Because you only gain three quarters of the money you normally get, as well as you only can store half of the money, which is 3,000. So if you don't have enough money saved up before this, odds are you're not going to get it. Because I even had a two relic game last night where that was the only challenge I missed. It was just, I missed doing that because I didn't have enough money to start off with, and the aliens didn't give me 6,000 over the course of it, so... Yeah, I kind of screwed myself on that one, because I bought a century gun right beforehand, like, after the last hive ended. So make sure if you're going to spend your money, do it as soon as the hive starts to make sure it's not that challenge, and wait for the timer to c get done counting down so it actually counts for the challenge, because there is a few second timer in between. As well as, like, if you ever have the challenges where it's, okay, you gotta spend, or you don't spend any money for 90 seconds or whatever, in that little 5 second time span, put down a sentry gun, put down some ammo, put down whatever you think you're going to need so you can survive a little bit better. It just makes it 10 times easier because it doesn't put the challenge easier either. That way you can actually have supplies while you're going through the challenge though too. With that it's not too difficult. This is the second barrier hive as you're seeing here. Again there is no challenge, there is no challenge bonus, so you're not going to get any skill points or anything either. So as soon as you get through this, another side note, there is a rhino waiting for you <laughs> at the other side of this buildings thing over here on the other side of the town there is a rhino waiting for you so throw up a sentry gun or something you also have three thousand dollars in cash there 2250 if you're using the smaller wallets relic so now you're going to see me flipping through just what to spend skill points on that's a much more relic specific thing though so i'm not going to go over that right away i'll go over that a little bit more in detail later so i think if you run certain relics i think it's a better idea to upgrade some stuff first so right here you're seeing me take down the rhino it's actually very easy to kill if you have this LMG with the plus 50% class specialist damage bonus. It's really easy. If you don't have an LMG because you're on pistols only, and if you have mortal because if you don't have class specialist because you're on mortal, yeah, things can get pretty bad pretty quick. So I would definitely throw it down on Sentry Ground. I usually do just anyways, just because I'm gonna get that cast bonus right afterwards. This challenge you're seeing me do right here is don't take any damage from secret aliens. This is very, very easy with the sentry gun. Just point the sentry gun in the direction of the whatever the wherever the seeker meteor is coming down from because if you're if it's pointing in the direction of the seeker meteor and they at least have a chance to be able to see them they're behind a bunch of buildings or whatever it's going to kill them just extremely fast extremely quickly every single time just really easily done like that and basically this is i don't do this in this gameplay that much i do towards the later rounds but i take a sentry gun out on every single round i start on this and here is the leper challenge I actually made a guide on this right a little while ago, like a few days ago. So if you guys want to know more about that and the differences between the leper and the hunter, you can see lepers right there. That's hunter right there. Not much of a difference you can tell, but I go over the main differences, which basically the biggest one is that it's got a red glowing face. I look over it in detail in a previous video, so if you guys want to check that out, be sure to do that. And now we're going to go into the kill five aliens with traps before the hive is destroyed challenge. This is done by just turning on the electric traps down there. There's actually three electric fences down that for this high bone. I'd really recommend activating two of them. But unfortunately, even some of the times if you're just on a really bad hive for using traps, unfortunately some of the time you won't even get it by turning on all the possible traps you can for the entire hive round. It's kind of stupid, but sometimes it just happens, you know, so you can run back and forth across a trap, but if it's that far away like this one is, it's not gonna be <laughs> it's not gonna be worth it, I don't think. Sometimes you have to remember that drill health is more important than the challenge bonus because the drill health is going to give you a much bigger bonus than the challenge bonus will. This In this game, for example, I had a score of 206,000. I later did a one relic game of two challenges missing, and I still had a score of 210,000 just because I protected the drill a lot better in that game. 
but I just tried to flip this game here because the challenges are very important, and I did finish all of them for the first time in this game. And speaking of drill health, you're gonna see right here I have the challenge where I don't let the drill go below 50% health. If you're letting the drill go below 50% health at any time, you're not having a very good game. You shouldn't really have to repair it either. I mean, you can you can repair it. I'll have a like once per game where I'll probably just repair it just because I can. There's really not much of a need for me to, but I really don't necessarily need to go repair it. I hardly ever let the go drill go below 75 the way it is. So just throw up a sentry gun whenever you feel like you need one, and if provided you have enough money for it, I'll go over that more in detail later as well though. But for right now, you can see, yeah, I just finished that challenge. And now that we are done with that hive, we're going to go on to the final hive, hive number 14. And yeah, it's not that hard of a hive, but you can see the challenge I got down there, that makes it quite a bit harder. <laughs> Having to have 50% accuracy or higher during this hive, that makes it really difficult, actually. And I still did it, I was still able to do this as you're going to see. But so I'm basically just burst firing or single firing with letting my sentry guns do almost all the work just because I don't want to do much shooting because my accuracy isn't that good in general and I feel like a little bit in this game too it tends to lag quite a bit where you think you're right on top of something there's no way you miss a shot but then the alien moves a little bit later but you've already fired your shot by that point but apparently the game registers it as the alien has already moved or something so maybe, maybe it's just me, maybe it's just my server and stuff but I feel like I miss a lot of the shots that are definitely right on top of them. So yeah, just if you have any of these challenges ever, usually they're more on the earlier hives and they're like 75% accuracy, so what I'll do on the earlier hives, I'll just shoot one shot and then just knife the rest of them just because it's really easy to because they're usually the scouts on the really early ones. But if you're right here, yeah, you're not going to go knife only, so just try to be careful with your shots and make sure you're choosing your shots wisely. Don't try to, if your sensor guys are shooting at it, make sure, kind of common sense, make sure that they don't kill it before you start shooting at it because then you're not getting accuracy on that, obviously. Alright, and now that I've done what I believe to be a pretty comprehensive guide of the challenges, we're going to now go on to how to escape extinction, which gives you a very big bonus, so it's important to do, but it really is pretty easy, there's nothing to it, really. I've, I have failed on escaping before, admittedly, but <laughs> it's if you're, if you're doing well in the drills and you have good upgrades and stuff and you at least have a decent amount of money when you're starting with this, there's nothing to it. Put a sentry gun down there, but actually not there. Right on the patio of the house right there, that's where I would put it actually. Do not put it where I put it because as you're going to see here when I go through it, it's going to have a hunter right on top of it, like the hunters came out from behind and just took it down right away. It actually doesn't take it down, I kill it before it takes it down, but it's a lot more effective if it's actually shooting obviously. So yeah, as you're going to see up here, there's going to be a hunter on it, there's always a hunter on it every single time. And so you're going to have two spots like this where it's blocked off by a big meteor as you're coming through this. So I would run with your pistol the entire way except for when you're tra trapped here. If you have pistols only, obviously that's something you can run with. But I would also pull the LMG right here if you have an LMG to take down the Rhino. Take out a sentry gun if you have a sentry gun, if you don't spare money for a sentry gun. I do here, but I didn't for some reason. And so also, it'd be, it's very important though as well. If you don't need a sentry gun, don't take one because you can. this is a much more important spot to put it at right here. You can see there's a rhino right behind me, and if you if you have a riot shield in the back, it's going to be a lot easier for him to not hit you as hard as well, because he'll hit you once and he'll just take one off your riot shield. And the default riot shield comes with 10, which is more than enough. Once I buy one, it lasts basically the entire way through the game until like the very end. And so once you're through here, find your vest if you want to, because after you run through that second spot where you're stopped at, you will run all the way straight to the helicopter. I have never done this once without having that minute 30 or more left over, which is actually a secret achievement. I've never done it once without having that happen. So as you can see right there, that is my first time escaping with a relic, as well as my first time completing all the challenges. So yeah, pretty good game there. I have had two more successful games after this with a 210,000 with a one relic game. And the one two relic game I've done has been a 246,000 I believe. That one is currently at about rank 300 or so. The old one was about at 900 now or so, something like that. But now that we're done with this, I'm going to go into, at least for Prestige 1, I'll do Prestige 2 very soon, I have a guide basically just made up for it. We're going to go into Prestige 1 and what you should upgrade first and when. Alright, and now we're going to go into basically some general tips and tricks as well as first and foremost, what to upgrade and when. This is going to be regarding Prestige 1, which the gameplay I have here is actually Prestige 2, but it's going to be a lot closer to the strategy I was using in the Prestige 1 video for what to upgrade and when. In the Prestige 1 video, basically, I had everything upgraded that I wanted to be upgraded because I was doing every single challenge throughout the entire game. In this gameplay, I missed one, but I'm not going to go through the whole gameplay, I'm just going to go through parts of it. And I will go through the whole gameplay later in a separate video for Prestige 2. But for right now, like, I can just ever do Prestige 1. 
But first and foremost, your first upgrade, no matter how many relics you have, I would say this is going to be the first and most important thing to do. Upgrade ammo to maximum. And I know a lot of you thinking, why? You definitely don't need that much ammo, especially in the early rounds. That's probably one of the stupidest things I've heard. But really, it's probably one of the smartest things you can do, because if you're not spending money on ammo because you have this massive amount of ammo stocked up, then you're going to be spending money on sentry guns and stuff. Having a sentry gun in these early rounds just absolutely wrecks these little scouts, and it's just... You'd be amazed how much a little bit of drill health can get you in just a ton of amount of score, and the more score you get, obviously, the better rank you're going to get. That's kind of self-explanatory. I don't think I need to go through that. But it's just... So having a sentry gun, basically, at all times, make sure it's in a spot where it's going to be effective, and you can also kind of watch it. Keep looking back at it every once in a while to make sure it's still up. But I would recommend having a sentry gun, basically, at all times. That's basically, I think, the most important thing you could have, is just having ammo to maximum, like you just saw me upgraded there. Having my ammo to maximum, I'm using pistols only as well, so I can't buy guns. So it's, all, it's actually very important pistols only as well, just for the fact that you need ammo and you only have one gun to do it with. Alright, and now we're going to go on to kind of like a screenshot of this. I think that'll be more helpful. Now that I've showed you guys why I like to use a sentry gun and maximum ammo upgrades is the first thing I do. So now I'm going to go into the following hives after that. These are all assuming you get the maximum challenge points possible for each hive. And you might not, so maybe you're just going to be doing these upgrades a little bit later than I'm describing them in the video. But that's okay, because this is basically the route I would go anyways. The next hive of upgrades, I would say, would be, with two skill points, would be the pistol upgrade for the higher damage at longer ranges. That's very helpful. And the sentry gun upgrade for improved targeting and drastically improves the range on it. It's like double the range on it, I think. Those two are very helpful, and I would definitely have those two as my next two. After that, I would probably do the weapon specialist upgrade, those two upgrades actually aren't that important within themselves, it's just like faster aiming down sight and stalker kind of effects, kind of like stuff like that. Those two aren't that important within themselves, but the following upgrades, those are very, very important. So that's why we're going to do those now. Alright, and assuming everything goes well up to the barrier hive, that is where you should be at right there. So you'll have these upgrades going into the barrier hive. Once you complete the barrier hive, you will have one extra skill point, not two because there will not be a challenge for it as I said before. And where I would spend that one skill point would be on the next sentry gun upgrade. I would say to do it on the weapon specialist upgrade, but that next upgrade costs two points, and I'm just gonna say let's save that for the next hive when we get two skill points from that. And like I just said, we're going to be spending our next two skill points on the weapon specialist upgrade, which is sleight of hand, so that's very, very important and useful while you're playing this. And after that, on the next hive following that, we're not gonna spend that on anything because we're gonna save up for the last weapon specialist upgrade, which is the 50% damage boost, which is very important as well. Having all that done, you'll have taken out three hives, and we'll be approaching the barrier hive next. And we'll have one skill point left over, and we're going to get one skill point from this next one. So with those two skill points after down with the barrier hive, we should spend those on the next sentry gun upgrade, which increases 30% damage to rhinos from the sentry gun. That is really important, because now we're going to be seeing rhinos for the first time. Alright, and now we're progressing to our last set of hives. And we're going to want to spend our next three points, so over the next two highs, we're going to want to spend our next three points on the last sentry gun upgrade. This will allow you to have two at once, and they will overheat less frequently. Both of them will overheat less frequently, so it's really helpful for the higher hives, especially when you have a ton of money left over because you have a ton of ammo left over because you have the ammo upgrade all the way. And after the first two highs are done, we will have one skill point left over after our sentry gun upgrade, so we should spend that on the next pistol upgrade, which will give us a time and a half the ammo capacity that it normally has. So if you're using the fully off pistol, it should be 15 rounds to 22 rounds instead of 15. And so that's just really helpful. It's not really necessary, that's why I'm doing it this late of an upgrade. And actually after this, you're just gonna want to upgrade armor the rest of the way because that's really, it's, armor's really nice for the last high because you get a lot of money and in case you start getting in a bad situation, it's really helpful to have. But honestly, the more I place Extinction and the better I get at it, the less I use armor. So that's why I upgrade armor this late. I used to upgrade it earlier, but it's pretty it's getting pretty easy right now, so it's not really necessary to upgrade it earlier. And also, I'm figuring out that the best defense is to have a good offense, basically, because if you're killing them quickly, that's the most important thing. If you're killing them really slowly, it's just it doesn't matter if you're protecting yourself well. There's going to be a ton of them, and they're just going to rape through whatever defenses you might have if you're not killing them quickly. And assuming you've completed all the hives with all the challenge points, which probably won't happen every time, but once you get better it'll happen a lot more often than you think it would, you will have two riot shield points left over to spend on the well two challenge points to spend on the riot shield. 
that's really not necessary either, but it's just kind of nice and it's upgraded and you have points for an upgrade, so why not? And guys, that is basically it. That is the entire guide. I will be posting also full gameplays to cover the little cracks I might have missed here and there, just little questions you guys might have. I'll be posting a full gameplay for each of the prestiges, one for one relic, two relics, three relics, and so on. And actually, I will be playing with you guys very soon as well too. Send me a friend request or a message saying you're from my channel. I don't accept random friend requests anymore, so make sure you say you're from my channel. If you're from my channel, you know it's fine. But otherwise, it's just I don't like adding randoms that are just from random lives and stuff that I have no idea who they are. So as long as you're from my channel and I know that, that's fine. And actually, I'll even play multiplayer or safeguard with you guys if you guys would like, because I'm actually enjoying basically every aspect of this game. Safeguard, extinction, and multiplayer are a lot of fun to me right now. So if you guys want to play that, let me know. And yeah, I think that's pretty much it for the video, so make sure to give this epic 20 minute or so <laughs> video a like if you enjoyed it. It took me a long, long time to make, and I think it really turned out well, so I'm happy with how it came out. I hope you guys have a happy Thanksgiving, because it's Thanksgiving here in the U.S., and I will see you guys later.